Hey everybody, this is Ahmed Musli here, or known as now, now on AFM on YouTube, and I'm here with uh, Chad York, the composer over at Next Level Games. We recently uh, developed or, or made the music for Luigi's Match and Dark Moon. Hey Chad, how are you going? How's it going? Great, how are you doing? I'm, I'm fine, thanks. Uh, thanks for giving me uh, your time, actually. I know sometimes when these projects start up and, you know, new games and, and whatnot, usually uh, people like you don't find free time, so thanks so much for this. Oh, we're happy to do it. So, uh, Chad, for the uninitiated, please introduce yourself to everybody so they can know you. Oh, my name is Chad York, and uh, I'm an audio director here at Next Level Games. And uh, yeah, we work with Nintendo developing uh, products such as Punch Out and Strikers Charge, and uh, most recently, uh, Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon. Great, that's good stuff, and we'll get to these games individually later. For now, uh, let's start with uh, where did you, st uh, where did your passion for music st uh, start in general, or when did it start? Uh, I think you know, like a lot of people that get involved in music, it starts when you're a kid, and you know, you. Uh, my family actually was uh, had a history of being involved in a lot of music. My grandparents and all their brothers and sisters had, you know, family bands that they played in the community they grew up in. It was a farming community, so it was more. Uh, ethnic, more like uh, bluegrass kind of stuff, but it, you know, it was always around the, always around my house, my uncles and you know, my grandparents always played and I, uh, you know, I probably from a young age, around maybe eight or nine, I guess, probably around then, started showing interest and then, you know, the usual lessons, guitar lessons and piano lessons and stuff as a kid and uh, yeah, that's, I think it's probably the same story as most people to get involved in music. I went on, I studied at Grant McCune University and uh, I was a jazz major there, and uh, that's really where I got, you know, a big part of the foundations of composing and understanding music. And, uh, and then, of course, after that, just the uh, experience of the world of making music, just working on various kind of live gigs. I worked on cruise ships for a couple of years, you know, did hotels and played in original bands and traveled around wanting to be an original music composer and, you know, various commercial stuff, got involved in uh, doing television commercials and radio spots and games and things like that. Next thing you know, I'm uh, making video game music. Well, that's cool. And everything uh, before Next Level, it was basically freelance stuff, as you were saying. Yeah, I did basically from the time I left, uh, left school, I worked as a freelance, either, you know, either as a musician. I also studied uh, recording sciences when I was in that program. So I... Uh, I started doing a lot of freelance engineering and started my own studio, so of course it was a mix of being a producer and sometimes being a musician and sometimes playing live gigs and you know, as a musician you gotta figure out where to make ends meet all the time. Um, and of course at some points that involved teaching, so I, I did some teaching at Vancouver Film School. Okay. And uh, that's actually how I got uh, led into the gig here at uh, Next Level. I was working on some projects with uh, one of the instructors there was an art director and he was just teaching part time, and worked at Next Level as an art director. And uh, he, uh, you know, we enjoyed working together. And he brought me on board, or got me an interview with the company. They were trying to figure out their new model. They hadn't actually had an audio director prior to this, mm -hmm. and uh, they decided they really needed someone who was going to own and manage that side of things. And uh, yeah, just you know, one thing led to another. Uh, when was that, by the way? When did you start working at Next, Next Level? Uh, that was about uh, the start of 2006. I started, I guess I started talking to them, I think, by the end of 2005, and then uh, yeah, early 2006 I started here, so yeah, like eight years ago. Wow, that's a long, that's a long ride, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, so far it's been fast. I mean, you know how life is, it goes fast. But uh, yeah, it's, it's been great. We've got to work on a lot of great projects. Oh, that's nice. And anything in particular that stands out in during your freelance days? Was it more like the television commercials, or were the were the bands more the more passionate thing that you loved doing? You know, I, people always ask, "Oh, what's your favorite band or your favorite thing in music?" And I think I always look at music like a lot of people relate to food. You know, I mean, I like different. I like Italian food. I like French food. I like Lebanese food. I don't think I'd want to eat any one of them every day. But, uh, <laughs> You know, music is, that's the beauty of it. I mean, there's a lot of diversity and, you know, I spent a couple of years doing uh, a lot of rap artists because that was kind of the, you know, the guys that were doing demos and then they always wanted uh, string accompaniments and I could do string arrangements. So that was something that got me a lot of work. But then, you know, after that, I was kind of burning out on it. So I did some country music for a while and, uh, you know, I've done a lot of pop and rock stuff. And of course, jazz is a passion. And so, yeah, I, you know, I think for me, 
there's just that's the beauty of music is there's so much to explore um, you know it's more than a lifetime's worth of exploration so it's just endless things and I just want a taste of all of it I guess yeah uh, absolutely agree uh, that's a really nice uh, standpoint that you look at because uh, this leads to our uh, another interesting question uh, when uh, let's talk about uh, uh, I, we can, Mario Strikers Charge, which is your first game for Next Level Games, the, the one, first one you composed for, if I'm not mistaken, right? That's right, yeah. Yeah, and uh, obviously from what you're saying here, uh, what I felt when I listened to the music from Mario Strikers, it, it has everything. It, 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 obviously there's a lot of, I, I, saw, I felt a lot of like a heavy uh, jazz rock uh, fusion, but there was a, a bit of everything when you're looking. So I, I want to ask, uh, how did you approach this uh, project in general, or how did Next Level Games approach you? Well, I, initially, I think, uh, you know, it was just probably naivety. I, I went in there with my own perspective and taste, and we started talking about all the different characters we we're going to have. And I think, you know, the budgets at the time, the reason a lot of video game music sounded the way it did is just the budgets were low and it was usually you know one person in a basement with some synthesizers or a bit of MIDI and uh, and that's that's what happened so you know the music reflected that sound and I came in from a world of where you just recorded live musicians and you know I sure I you know done a lot of sequencing when it was necessary but it wasn't my first choice and uh, when we started talking about the characters and uh, we worked primarily with Tanabi san on that project and uh, he has a passion for music and so I convinced him basically to, to bump, bump the budget up a bit and I said hey this is the concept I have for this I really wanted to you know try and push things in a new direction they were doing that in the art they really wanted to push all the characters into a more of a tween kind of audience that you know it's a bit more of aggressive art style and yes. character design and it seemed appropriate to kind of give them a lot of personality in music so that's that's where I went. I thought, you know, well, let's do this. Let's keep it to all real instruments. So pretty much the entire soundtrack is all live performances. Even though there are some keyboards, those are all performed live. There's not very much programming at all. I think a little bit of drum programming. And uh, yeah, and, and I, I was yeah, I was really happy with the way it turned out. It seemed, it seemed like it was a little bit different than uh, some of the other you know titles they were putting out around the Mario franchise, anyways. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, the, the, as you said, the first things that basically struck out, st stood out for me and a lot of people in Mario Strikers char charged was the artwork and the music because uh, before that Nintendo usually they operated in a way like you said synth it, it didn't uh, put a lot of uh, budget into live instrumentation at least uh, it was sort of uncommon with Nintendo titles so you sort of in next level games I felt that you guys sort of pioneered the the live instrumentation because Nintendo sort of look at, looked at it from that perspective and they started doing their own live instrumentations with their own games in the future so it's really cool to see that you you actually pushed uh, for for the budget of increasing the the live uh, instrumentation with uh, Mario Strikers charged it's cool to see yeah yeah, yeah well they've, they've been very supportive of everything uh, we tried to do and I'm not sure if we really we, how much influence we had on their decisions to do that or if it was just purely you know the consoles evolved to that point but uh, yeah, it definitely makes it a lot more fun, and uh, I work with uh, a couple of composers that you know I've worked with since I went to school. So I've been working with these guys for 20 years, Darren Radke and, and Mike Peacock, and uh, and you know it's fun for us because we we work as a group, and there's a lot of improvisation and, and you know sort of bouncing of ideas off each other. So it feels more um, feels more organic, I guess, or it feels more real. It's not just uh, created in isolation with a you know a, a sequence. Yeah. Uh, by the way, the uh, title of audio director, that does also include uh, the sound effects and the voice acting or just music? That's right, yeah. It's, I'm responsible for basically anything that comes out of the speakers. So all the voice acting and all of the uh, sound effects creation fall in that domain. So yeah, it's, that's you know another big part of the project that's super fun is working with Charles and the other voice actors to, to create all the characters because you know they're just so talented and uh, and we really just get to go have fun for a week in the studio, you know, coming up with all kinds of zany gags and bits and things that'll make people laugh and um yeah i mean it's it's it is one of the funnest part of the project to do the voice stuff 
Yeah, I was just gonna follow up with that because I, I'm pretty sure it's really fun to work, work with Charles Martinet. I'm also a huge fan of him. Usually when you see him live or doing his voice acting, he's really enthusiastic and uh, he really gives a lot of character into these characters and uh, he is actually quite hilarious when you, especially when you guys did the stuff with Warrior and Waluigi in Mario Strikers Charge, th both these characters are really hilarious. You know, the rest are like sort of cool, but those in particular, for some reason, uh, uh, they're, they're given a lot of attention in, in Mario Strikers Charge and in uh, a couple of other sports games on the Nintendo. Yeah, you know, they, they really do bring them to life. And, I, you know, I'm glad that they gave us some license to do some of those gags because some of them are a bit, you know, on the edge, <laughs> on the edge yeah. of what they don't know yeah. uh, yeah. you know, those characters do. Um, but, yeah, and, then, you know, a lot of that, too, comes down to the sound designers. i got a great team here of sound designers that uh, Scott McFadgen and Liam Wong, and uh, we had some other contractors on at that time. And, you know, they're just really talented at uh, bringing the... The animations to life you know and uh, of course it's it's a team effort right there's there's a lot of work that happens on the animation side before we even touch it so yeah yeah <laughs> those characters are it's you know it's one of those things we do what we call character diamond meetings or character mm -hmm. persona meetings mm -hmm. where we actually uh, get in a meeting room and sort of hash out you know what these characters what what makes them tick and uh what inspires them and you know we make references of the types of things they would do and brainstorm you know what kind of funny characteristics they might have or show off in those little uh, sequences yeah so it's it certainly comes from all directions i guess is where i'm going with that yeah yeah exactly you're right yeah, it's like a team effort you, you would say uh you were talking about the, the the interesting like tween gags the one that's really popular in youtube that i noticed is uh waluigi with his crotch chop from the wrestling <laughs> and <Yeah>. he <laughs> that's actually a bit of a, it's a, it's quite hilarious and this carried over from the original mario strikers if i'm not mistaken for the that's gamecube right. but you added the really cool banjo sounds for his uh background music that, that you know add coupling the banjo sounds with the crotch chop it's quite hilarious and it works out really well in my opinion <laughs> and a lot of people see that in youtube they like they laugh, they laugh their butts off like what <laughs> why luigi doing a crotch crotch top is the last thing that somebody would expect so yeah <laughs> props <laughs> you know you gotta try and you know that's the thing about comedy is you have to uh, you have to shock people a little bit yeah and uh, yeah i just I, I wanted him to really contrast the other characters and i you know that was one thing that seemed to Bit. I don't know. I'm not sure why. You know, it's not like there's any history of the character being from the south of the U.S. or anything like that. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it seemed to match up, and it added a certain energy. You know, the banjo has such great energy that uh, you know, in the spirit of the sports, all the sports kind of themes had to be energetic, and the banjo at least held that together. So. Yeah, I was really happy with that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot of the, all of, most of the character themes, uh, in my opinion, in Mario Strikers Charge, they do fit quite well. When you look at Daisy, for example, she has that punk rock, pop rock type of uh, <laughs> background music, and Peach has the Britney Spears glam pop. Yeah, it's it's nice that you were able to fit most of these uh, characters with certain themes that are usually not seen in the Mario title, but in the same time, when you when you see it all together, like you said, it, it works really well. It does. Well, I'm glad you think so because there was times where I thought it might be, uh, you know, too much of too many ingredients in the soup. But, uh, yeah, yeah I think overall, because of the comedy kind of aspect of it, I think you know it's like sketch comedy. You can yeah. kind of you can mix and match styles and get away with it. Uh, by the way, uh, before uh, Mario Strikers Charge, you, were you familiar with the Mario universe at all, or did you have did you have that uh, certain glimpses with video games, or what's your well, background yeah. with that? No, you know, I'm I'm gonna date myself here, but I mean, I grew up. Uh, you know, we had the first NES consoles, and uh, I mean, I was by no means a master like my brother was, but <laughs> I spent, you know, my entire childhood playing video games. I mean, we had, the initial systems we had were, you know, on the uh, Texas Instruments TI-99 and things like that. I don't know if you know those consoles, but um, they're really the first kind of home computers. My dad worked in computer science, so we always kind of had the, the latest and greatest tech around the house all the time. And, uh, and my brother was a master gamer. I, you know, I, I had some skills, but uh, I got to credit him to the whole Master of the Mario universe and my exposure to that. But yeah, we grew up you know, all the way through all the Nintendo consoles, and he's still a gamer today, so he, uh, you know, he's definitely the, the biggest influence on uh, me being up to speed on all the Mario stuff. 
And that's cool, it's nice that that's obviously an added perk that you're familiar with uh, the Mario universe. But uh, in my opinion, it's, it's really interesting. Uh, I want to ask, uh, did Nintendo have any input on your music uh, with Mario Strikers Charged, or they just let you be? You know, on that one specifically, they, they were really hands-off. Um, Tanabe-san, you know, he definitely had his opinions about uh, certain, certain aspects of it. Like, we, you know, we present pieces and then he'd say, oh, I think it should be, you know, for instance, Mario, when we first did it, um, I think I had a little bit, I had more brass and things like that in Mario's thing. It was more heroic. It was more like a Superman kind of thing. Yeah, okay. Um, and he, you know, when we're, this is when we're still feeling out the, even the art direction to some degree. And uh, he said, "No, I really want this game to be more rock and roll." And so that was oh. one of the first, one of the first games we did was for him. And yeah. uh, you know, it was really stuff like that, really high level. I want to keep this, you know, in this kind of area, make it fun, make it energetic. And uh, and I think that kind of drew. But we saw, I think, if you if you know, when you become the uh, the big Mario, I forget what that, the Mega Mario yeah. power up or whatever. Yeah. I think we kept some of the uh, superhero heroic kind of stuff for that, so you can hear okay. the of there. But um, yeah, the, you know, he's great. He's really great at uh, giving you a problem to solve and uh, helping you understand what the motivation is, but he doesn't solve the problem for you. He, he lets you go do that. Because I mean, really on the team, you know, that's where you get that satisfaction. You really want to have the ownership of finding those solutions yourself. And he is, you know, he's really a sensei, you know, I mean, a lot of people talk about Miyamoto and, you know, how good he is at, at mentoring people, but Tanabe-san is exactly the same. He's a really great mentor and, uh, and he really knows how to lead a team. It's, it's great that they, uh, they actually, you know, were not, uh, exactly not 100% hands-on with the music because I, I, in my opinion, I, I would think that Nintendo would be more controlling, but uh, it's really nice to hear that they're, you know, sort of like giving you uh, glimpses of what you should do, but in the same time giving you the freedom to work, because uh, Mario Strikers Charged. One of the things that really uh, intrigued me is it, it didn't have a lot of remixes from the Mario games. It didn't have a lot of music from the Mario games, except uh, uh, there's the Boo. The Boo has uh, from Mario 64. There's a, uh, and uh, the Starman theme, the jazzy or funky version of the Starman theme. Other than those, I don't recall any other, everything else is really original. And in my opinion, that's a good thing. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but it's nice to see that, that you know, you sort of shone through with original music instead of depending on the old Mario titles. And it gets you sort of redundant if there's just remixes and nothing else, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I think, you know, I've tried that on all, on that title specifically and on, on Dark Moon. I mean, I think people want to have some new content. We did do Bowser, we kind of referenced the boss theme in Bowser for Strikers as well, but yeah, you know, people want a flavor and reminder of the, the, the legacy and the history of the characters, but at the same time, you know, you want to feel like you're getting something new and fresh. Yeah. So, you know, Punch-Out, we did a different angle, there was so much nostalgia around that game, you know, we, we had to stay true to it. Every every time we turned around, the feedback was that people wanted to hear that Punch-Out theme, so... We had a lot of the Punch-Out theme in that game, but uh, yeah, I, I'm a firm believer in, you know, um, and trying to provide as much original new content, that's what, that's what people are paying for, right? And yeah. you don't want to just rehash the same ground every time. Yep, yep, absolutely agree. And that actually is an excellent leeway because we're going to move on to Punch Out for the Wii. And it's uh, it's really interesting. Everybody was really surprised that this game was revived back from the dead because nobody expected it, especially during yeah. the times of the Wii. And it was really interesting that when people heard that Next Level were doing it, uh, everybody was really excited because, uh, yeah, like I said, the, the take on Mario Strikers Charge was very original. So on that note, uh, same question, uh, you, you were sort of glimpsing on your answer here. Um, uh, the approach was slightly different compared to Mario Strikers Charge, right? In terms of audio. Yeah, I think, you know, the one thing we kept the feedback all the way around in terms of the character design, the gameplay design, people find that game very precious. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's a great theme. The original theme is, is so great and I think, uh, you know, we managed to bend and mold it into enough different varieties that, you know, you weren't really just uh, being pummeled by the same music over and over again. So, you know, I tried to make the theme as uh, diverse as we could and give people, you know, the flavor of the characters and basically let the flavor of the characters be the most important thing. So I think that, that really is a game about personalities. Yes. And uh, so in some ways, giving them the same melody all the time 
it just reinforces that because you stop really listening to the melody and more hearing the wrapper that the melody is being presented in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're right. It's it's uh, it's. Uh, the, I think the originality from my, from uh, Podchild came out, like you said, with the character themes. Each character has its, uh, just like Mario Strikers Charged. You know, the when you see the other boxers, again, the humor shines through. You know, it's like this next level game humor shines th shines through in terms of the boxers. And uh, can you tell me more about uh, how you got got into composing the themes of each boxer? And, uh, yeah, I mean, it was really just, you know, a question of trying to identify, you know, like I said, we did the character diamonds of uh, the personas of all the characters, and it was getting in a room with the animation team and the audio team and uh, the creative directors on the project, and, you know, we just have fun with it. I mean, that's that's what we do, is we get into meeting rooms and, and throw ideas around, and, you know, hats off to the, to the guys on the art and animation side. They always manage to come up with great visualizations that, you know, we can just play off of and, and try and enhance. And, uh, you know, a lot of great ideas just came out of those brainstorming meetings. And in terms of the actual music styles, I mean, you know, there's so much history to each of those ethnicities that it wasn't a huge stretch to decide what, what style to, to try and impose on those characters. Um, you know, some of them we had to, you know, bend a little bit more to try and create. I've never done any, like, Russian choir stuff for Soda Popinski or anything like that, so, you know, we had a little bit of research to do and background and stuff to try and make those themes really work, but uh, in the end, yeah, I think, you know, they, they match up pretty well to their ethnicities, and I think overall it was good. Uh, did Nintendo uh, change their approach with you guys in terms of punch out, or they it was the same uh, process as Mario Strikers Charged in terms of audio yeah. in general? Yeah, pretty close to the same process. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. I think it was actually almost identical. We were working with Tana Tanabi Sun again, and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, they're very, you know, the same sort of direction. You know, they would come into a meeting and sort of say, I think the one I remember distinctly was um, Kid Quick. You know, we had a uh, it's a little bit more of a down tempo kind of urban theme, and uh, it was good. They had the you know they have that objectivity and perspective on the characters, and they came in and said, oh you know I think we need this needs to be more energetic. This one needs to be pushed okay. up. We had that really kind of uh, energetic, upbeat uh, main theme, mm. and uh, yeah, it's, sometimes you get lost in the project, and I think they had a good uh, objectivity, and it you know got us to to bring it around. Yeah. And how about that main theme of Punch Out? You guys, uh, as you mentioned, that was an excellent job in, in remaking that main theme. You, you sort of like, uh, uh, I, I sort of imagined the main theme to be remixed in that rock way when I heard the chiptune version back in the day. I actually played yeah. it quite late, so. But the main theme, yeah, like you said, it's really familiar, it's, it's really nostalgic, but you guys managed to upgrade it in a really nice way. I wonder what, uh, did you guys do it before Nintendo's input or did Nintendo tell you, uh, hey, make a rock version of this? Yeah, no, that was, we were doing a prototype, so the way often these games work is we work on a prototype initially, just the base, prove out the basic gameplay mm -hmm. and prove out some of the art style pieces and prove out what the audio style is going to be. And uh, usually during that time, they really give us a lot of uh, leeway to you know, sort of pitch ideas and come up with our concepts. So yeah, that one we just came up with. I mean, I think that theme is so uh, iconic that it, it wasn't too difficult to transform it and modernize it, you know, move it from the 8-bit synthesized world. Yeah. And you know, and again, I took the same approach. It was all real instruments played by yeah. real people. You know, it's a real trumpet, it's a real guitar, real bass player, real drums. And you know, we wanted it to have that organic feel. And I think the, the rest of it just is, you know, it's part of the players on it. And uh, managed to have, you know, we have a great uh, pool of players here in Vancouver. And Darren and Mike are great. Uh, musicians as well, so you know, just that in itself updates it, right? Yeah, right, right, exactly. Uh, by the way, before moving on, uh, what's uh, the relationship between you and uh, Mike and Darren? Are you both like uh, each one composes a certain theme, or do you guys work on uh, maybe the same track, or how does the relationship work exactly? Yeah, we, we spend a lot of time, I mean, sometimes people will bring ideas, you know, to the sessions. But we do spend a lot of time in the sessions just basically sort of group brainstorming, group writing. Um, you know, of course, because we all play different instruments, we can set up and basic, it's basically like jamming through ideas. Um, mm. And, you know, all of us come from the same sort of jazz background. Because we came from the same school, we sort of speak the same language in terms of theory and, you know, and how we sort of look at music. 
So it's pretty easy for us to, you know, create stuff on the spot. But there are definitely times where, you know, guys come in with a, a pretty, you know, like a lead sheet for an idea. Like, hey, I've got this idea. It's this set of chords, this melody. Or sometimes they'll even sequence out an idea and bring it in. Rough sketches. Okay. And then, uh, and I'm the same, you know, I'll bring ideas in. And then we sort of work through the arrangements together and record them. And, you know, I'm not a super proficient piano player. I was a guitar major. So... You know, both Mike and, and Darren, well, if there's a piano part, they'll take the duties of, I'll hack something in, it's just functional, and then they'll do the rest. And likewise with, you know, some, some of the other instruments I'll perform, or, yeah. and, uh, yeah, that's that's basically how it goes down. We just kind of work like a band, I, you know, yeah. I do it another way. It's, it's really a luxury to have uh, a couple people to work with, that, well, especially as talented as them, but the fact that they, uh, they add their own perspectives and they add their own you know, their own tastes and rhythm and harmony to it that enriches it, you know, if it comes from one person, it's only going to be so deep, but when you add those other elements, it really, it really makes the whole product richer. Yeah, it's sort of like jamming, right? <laughs> it is, and that's exactly what it is. I mean, we have an idea and we just, you know, we just go for it, and, and usually those are the best ideas, the ones that, you know, that they come from, they come from that instinct and they just happen on the spot, and then your first kind of your gut instinct to do something and that's usually closest to the mark. Absolutely agree. Yeah, exactly. And on that note, we can move on to uh, Luigi's Match and Dark Moon. And uh, this is the game that I felt you sort of took a different approach compared to the previous two because it was a moody game. Sort of like yeah. it, 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 uh, it reflected you know, ghost hunting and mansions. It, it wanted to be scary in a comedic fashion. So. The approach felt really different, and it fe the music felt really moody. So, can you tell me more about how the process came to be? Yeah, well, so the beginning of that project, we actually did a lot more paper design for the whole product than we had previously. So, a lot of it was uh, the director, the game director, Bryce Holiday, and the art director, Neil Singh, and myself, and the producer, Ken Eloy. We basically were, uh, we're actually in this room that we're shooting in right now. At that point, uh, we hadn't renovated it yet, and it was just a, basically a small meeting room. And uh, we basically were locked up in here for about six months, just coming through designs. We watched a lot of reference, you know, films and old cartoons and movies and, you know, anything we get our hands on that was sort of in that genre of spooky, scary. And, you know, we just sat around and talked through, you know, what we thought was going to work, what wasn't going to work, and, you know, whether it was music or art or gameplay. And uh, we have a conference call with Nintendo pretty much every day for periods of time. And, present ideas to them and they present ideas back and it's really just a collaborative kind of uh, six months of talk and paper design and at the end of that I think we had a really clear idea you know just we'd spent so much time the three of us and Nintendo just sort of collaborating and discussing what worked and what wasn't going to work that there really wasn't there wasn't any decisions left to make it was pretty cemented in our heads and then it's just how do you communicate that out to the team in a, in a meaningful way? Yeah. And, uh, and of course, you know, the rest is history, I guess, as it goes. Uh, any references that, you, in terms of audio, that you uh, took maybe from uh, the original Luigi's Mansion for the GameCube, or aside from maybe the remixes of uh, Professor Egad's theme? Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, they did a great job of capturing, you know, the mood and, and ambience in the first game. Um, you know, it had a certain style to it. It was a little bit more electronic, and it was, there was yeah, some hip hop exactly. stuff. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, I kind of felt that uh, just given what we talked about on the presentation side and the art influences and what we were going to do on that side, that it felt we like needed more of like a a film score or a comedy score kind of approach to it, a sketch comedy kind of approach. Yeah. Um, and obviously, you know, the, the the emotion gets communicated so much in the uh, in the music. We needed to have something that you know could consistently lay that emotion out, whether he was going to be scared or whether it was light and humorous or whether it was you know something else. So uh, I didn't I didn't want to uh, I didn't want to have it all uh, synthetic because I sort of felt the most expressive way was through the orchestra. Yes. So we found a couple of you know early on just through experiments I was mocking some stuff up really early on, like before we'd even built a prototype, and it just kept, I kept coming back to that bass clarinet that uh, we've identi kind of identified as Luigi in the game, and it just always set a really good mood, because it could be really playful, it could be tentative, but it could be dark and, and brooding down below, so 
that kind of set the initial tone of where it was going to go and of course everything else seemed to we needed certain instruments to help support that we couldn't just do it with guitar and bass and drums it needed to be you know orchestral instruments strings pizzicato strings and things like that yeah yeah it was it was more of an orchestral game uh soundtrack and yeah it did uh, sort of add more flavor into the luigi's mansion world another thing that uh, obviously a lot of fans like and i'm glad you guys carried over from the original is luigi humming some of the themes uh how was that process with charles <laughs> oh, oh it's great I mean, you know he's such a pro that it, it really was a it was a breeze i think he did three or four takes we, we probably didn't he didn't need to spend more than maybe half an hour on it you know we spent some time listening to it and uh, and he's you know he's just so talented and, and he knows those characters so well that uh, it really it, yeah, it really went smooth it was actually more of a tech you know in terms of the feature the time that got spent the most was probably the tuning you know Liam uh, the sound designer that was working primarily on that that piece uh, was really just getting it to work properly uh, the coder of course uh, Hewan on the team here that put it together Hugh and Wooly he uh, and we spent a lot of time putting together the parameters for us so we could tune it and make sure it wasn't happening too much or too little and you know it's, it's funny it's little things like that seem to the consumer when they're playing the game like it's a you know a relatively small feature but you know we spent weeks on that trying to get it right and making sure that it was just just right for, for luigi yeah, I'd imagine. Yeah, initially you would think uh, these things are really easy to do, but I'd imagine that it, it does take a while to sync everything up. Exactly. Uh, yeah. By the way, there's another nice Easter egg in Luigi's Mansion: Dark Moon that uh, me and a couple of other people noticed on YouTube. Was uh, there's a scene that uh, Luigi's in the elevator is really scared, and the background music that's playing in the elevator is the pause menu music from Mario Strikers Charged. Whose idea yeah. was that? <laughs> That was, yeah, that was mine. It was definitely a, uh, you know, we wanted to pay homage to some of our previous titles and, you know, it seemed, it seemed like a good gag to have elevator music. Just one to contrast, you know, it's such a great contrast to have that light, airy music when there's something so scary about to happen, but then the fact that it was, you know, historically something that we had done, yeah, it was just, you know, a bit of fun. Yeah. Uh, what's nice about it is actually this that pause theme actually is really suitable to be elevator music so it, it does sound like elevator music in a good way obviously i didn't mean, don't mean it bad yeah, but it, it, it's excellent that uh, you were able to put, oh, sneak in that was, easter egg even in, even in strikers that was our intent was that you know you take the break and, and you know <laughs> the gag in strikers too that have the elevator music and the pause right yeah yeah exactly <laughs> it's funny yeah so uh, um, let's move on to uh, what's next for Chad York and uh, Mike and Darren. How are things going so far in Next Level Games? Uh, the last thing I read was an interview. You guys were, were obviously um, uh, talking about very positively about Nintendo to the point that you guys don't want to work with anybody except for Nintendo. So that's a really cool, uh, that's a really cool thing that you guys are doing. So how are things going so far with them? Great. Yeah, I mean, we're you know we're back in the experimental phase again, and so we've got new projects on the go, and uh, of course everything's always top secret, so I can't really yeah. say too much. But I yeah, no, we're uh, got a lot of great ideas and a lot of fun uh, music that's you know that's getting created, and I guess we we'll just have to wait and see when it comes out. But yeah, no, there's lots on the go, and uh, there's never a shortage of work. That's for sure. There's you know all these consoles come out so fast, and we it's. A long process, you know. Luigi's Mansion was three years for us to get yeah, that thing yeah. put together. So, yeah. I actually, can't wait for your next project. Hopefully, it comes out sooner than later. Another thing that I want to ask: um, uh, Is it possible, uh, from your point of view or from Nintendo, that you guys can work on releasing like, uh, like a CD or MP3 musics of your work with uh, Next Level Games officially in some point because I, I noticed a lot of people in YouTube they love clicking on these uh, you know the, listening to the music of Charged and Luigi's Mansion even some of my friends told me that we were playing that we were playing Mario Strikers Charged and there's that iconic music in the classroom level really catchy really hip hoppy jazzy awesome to listen to we play that le we play the level just to listen to the music and the same thing with Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon some of the you know the motif is very iconic so is it possible at some point that you guys like release a CD or release like MP3s, downloads of these tracks? Yeah, Nintendo actually, for the Club Nintendo members, uh, the Year of Luigi CD, they, uh, they just released it. 
Um, I think you can get them on, you should be able to find them on eBay probably, because mm -hmm. I'm sure there's club members that'll sell them. Uh, but yeah, they just released a compilation for the year of Luigi, and it has uh, six of the tracks from Dark Moon. Oh, that's nice. Uh, and it has some original stuff from the original Luigi's Mansion, of course, of course, a whole host of other Luigi games. Um, so that's one way. They did release um, a lot of this. A lot of the themes got released in Japan as ringtones for Strikers. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. So if you if you poke around, you probably can find them that way. You know, of course, Nintendo owns all of these products. Yeah, all obviously. Of these yeah. properties, so that's their discretion. But yeah, or contact uh, contact Nintendo of America or Nintendo of Europe, and then you know nag them to put out a, a compilation. Maybe one day they'll put together a compilation of the, the best of NLG or something like that. That would be awesome, actually. <laughs> that would be great to actually try to get done. But can, can, is it something that you want to do, or is it like depending on fan feedback and what you're trying to do? Yeah, I mean, you know, for me, you know, when you, when you work on something this long, you know, it's not something that I, I need personally, because, you know, you, you really know the content inside and out, and I, I, I don't think there would be something, you know, when I'm driving around town, I would probably put on. So by the time you finish developing a product, you usually need a little, just a little distance from it. Yeah. But, uh, but you know, I'm, I'm really appreciative that people, you know, have such a have affection for it and that people love it. And, you know, if it would make people happy, I'd love for people to have a copy of it. Um, but yeah, you know, at the end of the day, you know, it's fun that people go back and play the game to hear it too. So, you know, if that's maybe not a bad thing that people go back and, and play a little bit of Strikers Charge yeah. and enjoy it in the context of the game. Because that's really how it works the best. It's really meant yeah. to work with the game. Yeah, okay, I get you. Yeah, I get that point of view. It's actually, yeah, that's a really interesting. And it's a good point of view, yeah. Just to, in order to listen to the music, just go back and play the game. Yep, that's good stuff. Uh, this is a hypothetical question. Uh, obviously, uh, what came out in the interviews is you guys love working with Nintendo so much that you don't want to work uh, with anybody except for Nintendo in the t for the time being, obviously. Uh, yeah. Would it be interesting or would it be nice for you guys or ad advantageous if Nintendo like buys you out as a studio or would you like to be independent? You know, yeah, people have asked that before. I think there's a lot of advantages to us, you know, being here in Vancouver and, you know, we have our own team and our own management here and it's been successful so far. So, you know, there's a certain culture here and, and you know, we're, everyone in the company is, you know, just loves working for Next Level. Um, so, yeah, you know, I don't think that it's necessary to, yeah. to put out games for them to, to buy us. I'm not sure what advantage they would get out of that. And we probably can't work any faster than we are anyway. So I don't know that it would change a lot in terms yeah. of output or anything. Yeah. And uh, I know Iwata had, had made his comments about, you know, buying North American developers. So I think philosophically, Nintendo is not really looking to do that either. So, you know, I don't, I'm not sure what advantage there would be to do it anyways. Yes. Um, and we're, like I said, you know, we're, uh, they keep us busy. So as long as they keep, keep us busy, then and it's a great relationship both ways. Yeah, great. That, that's an excellent answer. Yeah, thank, thanks for that. Uh, so finally, uh, uh, what do you want to tell the fans of Next Level Games and Nintendo, and uh, where can people keep in touch with Next Level Games and Chad York and uh, the composers in general? Oh, well, yeah, we have a Facebook page, of course, uh, Next Level Games, so, you know, if you ever have any comments, it's a great place to post them. Go visit our Facebook page. Um, that's probably the best channel, but, I mean, you know, YouTube has obviously got uh, a ton of uh, content on it, so enjoy the content on there, and, uh, of course, Nintendo, if you, if you ever really want to send your feedback anywhere, Nintendo is a great place to send it, because they, they, they do listen to their fans, and um, between those three, I'm sure there's, you know, there's Nintendo sheet music as well, I did some interviews over there, uh, earlier this year or last year, I can't remember, fairly recently, uh, just specifically to the guys that are writing music and composing music at, mm -hmm. I think it's nin, ninsheetmusic.com or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. um, so that's another way if you uh, are interested in this stuff, but uh, I also have a, a Twitter account, at YorkChad, so you can follow me on Twitter. Great, cool stuff, and anything, uh, any final words to the fans? Hey, you know, I'm, I'm just appreciative that, uh, you know, we've gotten such great feedback over the years. You know, we just found out here that we're, uh, we're nominated for a bunch of awards for the Canadian Video Game Awards. Nice. Fall, so, uh, yeah, Con so that's... Congratulations, that's congrats. Thing. Thank you. <laughs> and, uh, you know, just, just keep enjoying the games, keep buying the games, and, uh, and thanks for all the, uh, the goodwill. Great, great. And that, I think, wraps up the interview. And thanks again so much, Chad, for giving your time uh, to me to uh, put this interview on. And it was great talking to you.
and hopefully we'll have more chats in the future. Yeah, well, it's my pleasure anytime. Thanks, Chad. Thanks, everybody. Uh, catch you guys later. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Bye.